beautiful viewers, it is I, Ratupi of Ratupi's Game Room, here with another review. Today is on Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, or as it's better known in Japan, Shin Megami Tensei 4 Final. Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse was developed by the same team behind the Shin Megami Tensei 4. The initial concept was to make a DLC to expand on the loose, neutral ending presented in SMT4. However, during its three-month development cycle, the DLC took a shape of its own, enough to be a standalone title to SMT4. It still expands on the ending of SMT4, however, it introduces us to a new cast of characters that interact with the old characters. This game has sparked quite a bit of controversy amongst fans of the franchise for two major things. A, the game takes on a more shonen approach to the story, similar to what Persona does, and B, this game doesn't have the traditional alignment system that we've seen in mainline Shin Megami Tensei since its inception. Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse was released in Japan earlier this year on February 10th, 2016, but was just released in America about two weeks ago on September 20th, 2016 for 3DS. The game was developed by Atlas, as per usual. The game came out with a very positive response from critics, but a mixed reaction from fans, as I said above. In this review, I'll try to give you some insight on why some people feel like this game isn't a return to form after all, and is instead a mockery of what makes SMT SMT. And I'll try to explain my perspective on the whole thing, and I'll try to keep this as spoiler free as possible. So with the shonen approach to the game, what I mean by that for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, essentially stems from shonen anime and shonen manga, which is anime and manga primarily targeted towards young male consumers. And the reason why people think this game is so shonen is because of its kind of preachy friendship vibe, which I drew parallels to to Persona. Well, at least the modern Persona games. There are a lot of moments in the game where it does feel like it tries a little too hard to have a strong and happy message, but what many people tend to not bring up is the fact that there are numerous endings to this game where you pretty much give your friends the finger. Sure, the true ending, so to speak, is the one where you get all squeaky clean, friendshipy, but if you really have that big of a problem with it, then the other endings are more suited towards a more traditional SMT vibe. Kind of. Now the whole, this game is too anime and friendship is stupid, is really something that doesn't bother me. I sometimes enjoy a good story about friendship and what it means to have strong bonds. And, well, yes, the characters in this game do fit in very anime archetypes of the genre, each character I feel has more of an emotional draw for me, unlike some of the previous mainline SMT games where your supposed friends get very little dialogue which makes you care for them. However, this game has some, well, very cliched characters that make you fall in love with them. Now my gripe with the whole shonen angle is that now my gripe with the whole shonen angle is that it is unfortunate that this game is targeted more towards predominantly teenager male playership. Uh, that's not really a negative thing, you know. But that just means there really won't be something for everyone here in terms of story in the game, which is unfortunate. There were definitely some segments in the story where it was intended to get some guys excited, which again, isn't a problem, but that's just how it is. Now, the next point of interest is that people tend to have a problem with the alignment system in this game, and I can see where they come from here. A lot of people expected a fully standalone SMT experience with a proper alignment system, but I knew since the beginning that wouldn't be the case. This game was, and still is, an expansion to SMT4, and it takes place after the neutral ending to SMT4, so it's only fitting that the endings in the game match that of neutral. However, this game doesn't entirely cast away law and chaos. There is a chaotic neutral and a lawful neutral endings to the game, and there is a weak chaos ending, weak lawful ending. Uh, they aren't really that great, and they kind of end like halfway through the game, but they're still there if you want to take them. It's really up to your perception of the situation here. So the way I see it, people need to quit treating this game like an SMT5 and view it for what it really is. It's just an expansion to an already established ending to a previous game. Nothing really more, nothing really less. Now I know some of you people will be like, well that's what SMT2 was, it's just an expansion of the ending to the first game. And while yes, that is true, SMT2 is a lot longer and is a lot more like, you know, standalone than Apocalypse is. Apocalypse depends, really, on the story of SMT4 to be told. While SMT2, yes, there are certain things that are brought over from SMT1, it can stand alone more, uh, more by itself than Apocalypse really can. Well, now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the actual game. 
As you might have guessed, the game is a turn-based RPG. Nothing out of the ordinary, not just in SMT, but also in the Japanese game market, period. The game is essentially the exact same to SMT4, which featured a modified press turn system, which basically means that if you hit an enemy's weakness, you get an extra turn within your turn to deal more damage. What SMT4 in this game brings new to the table, however, is the introduction to Smirk, which essentially is if you hit an enemy's weakness, you get a slight chance to Smirk, which is a little icon that appears on your character, which basically guarantees the next hit to be a critical. What Apocalypse adds new to the battles that we haven't seen in SMT4 is Team Assists. Basically, a Team Assist is when your little meter at the bottom of the screen fills up, your group of teammates will aid you any way they can and then deal a painful blow to the enemy. You'd think that's broken, but it takes quite a few turns to fill up the assist meter, and sometimes your teammates will miss the attacks altogether, so that being said, the gameplay is stellar. This game has some of the most challenging bosses you'll ever have to fight in a game, period. Well, depending on your difficulty. And you feel so rewarded for finally overcoming your obstacles. Something new Apocalypse adds to 4 is a revised map, which greatly helps maneuvering Tokyo. Which, if you played or know anything about SMT4, is that the world map of Tokyo was absolutely atrocious. But myself and many others find this new, greatly revised map to be vastly superior to what was presented in SMT4, which is a major complaint by many critics and gamers alike. Demon Fusion and Negotiation makes a return in this game, which has been a staple for most SMT games since its inception. A quick rundown for the uninformed, uh, you collect enemies, which are demons, through negotiations, and then you either level them up or fuse them in the Mido app slash Cathedral of Shadows to make them bigger and more powerful demons. And, as usual, you can register your demons in the Demon Compendium in the Cathedral of Shadows where you can buy back any demon you have ever gotten instead of having to refuse them all. This game is much of the same to SMT4, but that's not really a bad thing. The gameplay is great, and it's not just some of the best on the 3DS, but in gaming as a whole. And it's addicting, and it has an addicting and fun system built into it. Even if you're not a fan of the whole story thing, that's perfectly alright, there's definitely something here for you when it comes to gameplay, because the gameplay here is just too good to pass up. Now, the story in the game. I find it to be quite amazing and enjoyable, however many people would tend to argue with me in that department. The story starts off with a flashback of events that led up to the post-apocalyptic world that we are cast into. Our MC Nanashi and his friend Asahi are introduced as hunters in training, who only want to be recognized for their merit. After much begging, the time comes for them to truly test their abilities. Nanashi and Asahi, and the forgettable people number one and two, head out to fight some demons before they are ambushed by a big horseman with a serious sense of fashion. The demon horseman wipes out forgettable number one and two and our main character, who wakes up to find himself in a rail car to hell, where he meets a mysterious entity known as Dogda, who forms a contract with our character to bring him back to life in exchange to become Dogda's God Slayer. Personal Gold Slayer, as he likes to say. Basically what that means is that you're Dogda's toy, which our only purpose is to kill other gods and demons. Along the story, you meet a variety of colorful characters, which like I said before, fit into some very anime-style archetypes. The story can be sometimes a little too anime, even for my taste, but it doesn't spoil the whole game experience, and it certainly won't ruin the characters presented throughout the story. SMT4 Apocalypse is a worthy sequel to 4, but also a great standalone game. There is some debate going around right now whether or not it's worthy to be in the high echelon of SMT. I believe it does, but many would beg to differ. And let's face it guys, it's not the worst game we've had in this series. <coughs> mm. Anyway, I give SMT4 Apocalypse an 8.5 out of 10. Game similar to SMT4 Apocalypse that I recommend. If you haven't already, go back and play SMT4, that's a given. Now, if maybe if you're looking for a different franchise, may I recommend some of the Pokemon games? I know a lot of people hate the comparison between SMT and Pokemon, but the premise of catching and collecting monsters to fight each other is there, and if you enjoy that type of thing, well, there you go. And my personal favorite Pokemon game is Pokemon Platinum, Diamond, or Pearl. So, they're, they're a little bit hard to find, but if you can find them, or if you already have them, go out and give them a try. They're great games. This game is near perfect for me, however, it does have some issues sprinkled in here and there. I highly recommend this game to anyone new to the series or a veteran. The game delivers a variety of gameplay and story elements surely to entice any player. 
and it's definitely a worthy addition to have on your 3DS library. I can't wait to see what Atlas brings us next time in terms of mainline, but until next time, this game is a good bookend for what feels like an almost flawless franchise. I feel like I can safely say Atlas has done it again. Thank you.